Well, it's a little bit chilly, but man, it's a beautiful day here in Turga Trace. And today is a big day because we are hauling out. Our entire home, everything that we care about is gonna be pulled up by a giant machine and wheeled around over land. A lot of things have to go right. Oh, whoa, there's a piece of plastic in the engine intake. Hopefully, if everything goes according to plan, this yard period is gonna be the shortest yard period that we've ever done. I'm not that good with this stuff and I've never been trained in it. Can't really go back from that, can you? We're hoping to only be hauled out for a week. The pricing structure of this boat yard is that it's super cheap if you're only out for one week and then it starts to get expensive after that and so we're gonna try to bang this out in seven days <laughs> there's gonna be a little more work to do to the hull than I have been thinking Uh oh there's another one I've got the like boat yard day jitters I just get kind of anxious whenever this happens right like this is a big thing fingers crossed that that is the only unexpected thing that happens on this yard stay okay it is not running <laughs> so anyway nervous excited optimistic and in a little bit of a rush. So let's do this. All right, well, big day. I'm on baby duty. So Jordan is done so well at just getting the boat ready basically by himself. We've got some reinforcements. It's gonna help us. Let's do this. Okay, ready. Do we go in or back? Forward. Okay, great. Since arriving at Demarin Turga Trace in Turkey, we've spent a little bit of time getting to know this fascinating country. I have such a newfound appreciation for carpets now. And in last week's episode, we just began diving into our first couple boat projects. Oh my gosh, that's soft, <laughs> dude. Now I typically don't haul out so early in a winter period, but I've learned the hard way that if we wait till spring, boat yards, contractors, and really any business in the boat industry get really busy. So now is actually the best time to bang out a couple projects while the sailing season is still a ways away. Okay, at the boatyard. It's a really pretty morning. You can see the mountains. Anyways, I'm walking to the haul out slip right now to meet Jordan. Hopefully, fingers crossed, this is a smooth haul out. <laughs> Every time we're in a different country, it's a different procedure, different languages. <laughs> so it's always pretty stressful. Are you asleep? No, you're still awake? Okay, so we got a minute till we haul out, but I want to introduce you to Bakir, yeah, okay. the man, the myth, the legend. So Bakir has been kind of in charge of helping us with everything that we've been doing, whether it be getting parts or materials, like things that are impossible to find. Bakir finds it if we need contractors. He like finds them and organizes them and everything. Like he's the one that set us up with all this canvas work and all the different projects we've been doing. So Bakir, thank you, man. Yeah. You are the man. I, I just want to say the teamwork. Teamwork, dude. Yeah. <laughs> teamwork, yeah, that's what it's all about. And Bakir, how long have you had your business for here? It's about uh, two years. Two years? And I'm, at, I'm working for this industry this, this six uh, years, uh, six, seven years. And how old are you? I'm uh, 29. 29. I know, that's like so impressive to have such a good business for two years and you're not 30 yet. Yep. You're doing good, dude. Keep it up. <laughs> yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks, man. Well, teamwork, like you said. Yeah. Let's do it, dude. Oh, well, I gotta say, for me, the most stressful part is over. Oh, whoa. What, what? There's a piece of plastic in the engine intake. Oh, I thought somebody shoved that in there. Hey, Yasin, we have a little bit of plastic yes. in the through hull for our engine intake. Is that something that they do before they pressure wash? No, wow, so we just picked that up. We got it from the sea. This was shoved like all the way up in there. Yeah. Whoa, that's amazing. That Look at that. Bakir, did you see this? Yes, yes. Whoa. Yeah, I wonder how long it's been in there for. 
I, yeah, I wonder. Jeez. Yeah, I noticed this morning that when I started the engine, I was listening for the amount of water coming out of the uh, exhaust, and there was water coming out, but not as much as normal. But I was looking and it, the engine wasn't overheating. So I think that the reason it is because the water is so cold and the air is so cold right now, ah. that that ri that made it so it didn't overheat, you know? We accept this one as a gift. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, thank you. We made it. Yeah, yeah, it's, we did it. It was so, so clean, I, I was surprised. I don't see any blisters or cracks or anything. Oh, there's one little one over there. Yeah, here's a little guy right here. Uh-oh, there's another one. But, I mean, all in all, I feel like it looks pretty good. Time to, to, to drink a Turkish coffee. Eh? I'm, I'm ready, dude, let's do it. <laughs> I gotta say, drinking coffee hanging out in a marine supply store. Yep. It's like everything I like all in one place. <laughs> yeah, cheers. <laughs> cheers, dude. That's very good. So Turkish coffee is kind of like espresso, but but different. Yeah, they're different. Because with Turkish coffee, the coffee is in the water and it just, you heat the water up and the coffee yeah, 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 and, yeah. and then you just, what, you let the coffee settle. Yep. In the United States, if you make coffee like that, you do that when you're camping mm -hmm. and you call it cowboy coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, know, you know, know about that. that. I uh, made a lot, lots of camping with my wife. Oh, yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on Turkey as a place to do boat work? I think it's the, the, for labor. It's a very qualified area. That's what I've heard from people for a long time. Like even before we sailed yeah. across the Atlantic, I knew that we were gonna get a lot of work done in Turkey. Yeah. So hauling out is a stressful thing. There's no two ways about it. The way I see it is if your goals are as lofty as they should be, taking steps towards those goals is going to involve anxiety. So the trick isn't figuring out how to remove stressful things from your life, but rather learning how to cope with stress more effectively. For me, quitting drinking and prioritizing exercise has been a complete game changer, and it has helped me tremendously in learning how to manage my own anxiety. But strategies for coping with anxiety are different for everyone. And I think that speaking to a therapist can be extremely helpful for a lot of people. And that brings me to the sponsor of today's video, BetterHelp. BetterHelp can connect you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and to give you helpful, unbiased advice. You can do it from your phone or computer via phone call, video chat, or messaging. Whatever is the most comfortable form of therapy for you. I mean, it's basically the easiest possible way to start talking to a therapist. So let BetterHelp connect you to a therapist who can help support you from the comfort of your own home. Visit betterhelp.com slash Atticus or choose Sailing Project Atticus during sign up to get a special discount for your first month. So we're hiring some guys to help us sand and uh, paint the hull. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open up all the blisters that I can find right now so that when they come to start sanding, they'll see that there's blisters and they'll start the process of prepping them and fixing them. And this is a really tough thing to keep from happening because paint doesn't want to stick to lead, right? It's just not a very good material for painting. And so what happens over time is the primer kind of pulls away from the lead itself and then water gets in. So I'm just gonna chip this away as far as it kind of wants to, until I get to good paint. I mean, in a lot of ways, that's the point of hauling out once a year, right? I mean, sure, it's to do a bottom job and like take care of a project or two that I had in mind, but it's also just to like check on everything and uh, stop problems while they're still small. Okay, so I have finished basically like outlining what day I'm gonna do each project for the whole week. This to me is like a super necessary part of any yard period because if I don't do something, I can push it to another day and that way nothing doesn't get done without me being very aware of it. The bummer is I actually need to stop doing boat projects for the day because we are in the middle of applying for our Turkish temporary residency. And of course, we don't have all the documents that we need. So the issue with Turkey is that they need us to get several documents apostilled, 
which if you don't know what an apostille is, your life is probably much better for it. <laughs> like these things are awful. It's like international notarization. The United States will create an apostille for a US document or like the state of Florida can create an apostille for a Florida document. And that apostille makes it so that it's recognized and accepted by most other countries in the world. So we need to get that done for several documents that we have, and it's a long process. I'm a little nervous about it actually getting done in time. So long story short, we just found out that we had to do all of this stuff, and so I need to get it started today. So this whole trying to be on the hard for only seven days is definitely not off to a good start. All right, who do we got in the house? Say who is it? Tito's Isabella. Family. Isabella. Isa's favorite. Is Uncle Teton here? Old Faithful. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, do you love Uncle Teton? I'd say more than the world's. <laughs> <laughs> so where are we, buddy? Uh, we are staying at an Airbnb while Jordan is toiling away at the boatyard. And we have a really, really pretty view. We sure do. Whoa! This is definitely the prettiest view that we've ever had anywhere that we've stayed probably, right? Would you say that? Other than this. Than that? Every yeah, day. that's pretty good. I mean, just, just waking up and seeing the, the mountains and the water. It's a nice view for land people. Yeah. <laughs> for, for us. Like yeah, for, for, for a landsman. <laughs> they actually don't allow you to live aboard your boat while the boat is in the boatyard here. So it kind of forced us to do this, but it's great because it's winter. And so all these Airbnbs are empty and the rates are really reasonable for what they are. So I'm gonna head back to the boatyard, get more work done, but I'm gonna leave you with Teton, okay, baby? Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. So first project here is going to be putting this strainer on this through hole here. So basically this is the intake through hole for the water maker that we installed back in Malta. We've had a few incidents of seagrass clogging the water maker intake, and this strainer should solve that problem. And yes, Spectra does suggest that we use a scoop strainer just like this for exactly this reason. But I wasn't able to get my hands on the right strainer when we installed the unit. Once I finished installing the strainer, the next project was to change out the zinc on the propeller. The old zinc is off, new zinc is on. Next step is I'm gonna grease the inside of the Max Prop and I'm gonna do it in a way that I've never done before and that is using a grease gun and then like a little nipple that you can screw on to the housing. We've had to disassemble this thing every year for reasons that we were not expecting. So we've greased it every year, but this time is gonna be the first time that we'll do it the easy way. The next project is we're gonna be replacing the bobstay. Basically, when we were back in North Carolina, we replaced all of the standing rigging. Never replaced the bobstay because we just ran out of time. And so this is the replacement bobstay. So basically first we're gonna run the spinnaker halyard and attach it on the foredeck so that we can support the mast forward. And then we're gonna ease the backstay and that'll take the pressure off so that we can remove the bobstay. So I feel like the real trick with this part of the project is I gotta put a little bit of force into what I'm doing, but I also don't wanna like slip and then have this thing fall over. It's a little bit on the unstable side. Okay, so we're done with the Bob stay for now. Next project is I'm going to be replacing our heater. So you may remember that we've been having issues with our diesel heater for a long time. It was installed on the boat in 1997 and it's starting to have too many issues, so we're replacing it. Luckily, with the help of our friend Bakir, we were able to source a brand new unit. It's not the same exact thing, but it's the replacement model. So it's designed to replace exactly what we had. So I'm gonna head down into the hole and start removing the old heater. Okay. Uh, yeah, so there's the old heater and uh, gonna swap it in for the new one. So I've connected the harness, but the problem is 
that this harness is kind of designed to all in one piece, completely intact, make it all the way across an entire vehicle to like the power source and where the remote's gonna go. Problem is I've already got wiring here for all of that. And so I don't wanna like double up on wiring cause I might start to have voltage drop issues. So I'm going to cut this harness, which makes me very nervous because there's lots of connectors, this thing with like little resistors and just everything has to go back exactly the way it was. Yeah, just screw it. Let's just do this, you know? Nice. Wow. Can't really go back from that, can you? So it's funny because I'm starting to get sick, I can tell. And today I'm just like not feeling too good and just so tired. And so I'm laying here just looking at everything and just being like, you know, I could probably just take a nap. <laughs> this heater is a lot simpler in a way than the old heater because the old heater actually had all of the brains of the computer were outside of the unit because it was built in the 90s. But now this one has like modern computer stuff and so it all fits inside of the actual heater. So I don't have to hook all that much electrical stuff over here. The one bit that's a little bit complicated is that there's a fuel pump right here, like the S-bar fuel pump, but then there's also a boost pump that Pacific Seacraft installed. So long story short, I need to connect this relay that they had used before into this system and use it so that when this pump gets activated, the other pump gets power as well. So let's see how this goes. Wow, so I think I'm done in here. Actually, there is one more thing. I need to go install the control unit inside the boat. And I think we should be ready to test this bad boy. I think that's everything. So let's try to turn it on and see what happens. Hey, there we go. Okay, Bakir, what are the odds that this is gonna work when I start it? And uh, it will be done, I think. Yeah? You're confident? Yeah, I am so confident for this. Dude, I don't know. Let's figure out how to do this here. Okay. It is not running. <laughs> it's uh, making some kind of noise in here. Hey! Yeah, I am right. You were right. <laughs> okay, so far so good. It's happening. <laughs> Too bad it's hot out. <laughs> Man, it has just been a whirlwind of a couple of days and we've gotten a lot done and we made our deadline. So we were only in the boatyard for a week. And that is mostly because of Bakir and his guys. Cause you know, I got a couple things done, but man, they got a ton of work done in such a short amount of time. You can see they polished the top sides. They did a great job with the bottom paint. Those repairs that they did on the delaminated areas turned out perfect. You can't see anything on the keel. Like it looks like there was never anything. They did such an amazing job. So Bakir, how do you feel? I'm so excited. We have finished on seven days. I can't yeah. believe it, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, you did great, man. Yeah. It's because of you and your guys. It's the teamwork, yeah. it together. Teamwork makes the dream work, buddy. Yeah. Man, it's crazy when the bottom's freshly painted and there's like no imperfections and you can just see every little curve and every line of the underbody. I just love looking at this boat because like you can see the sea kindliness. Like you can see in the shape of the underbody how well it would sail offshore. It's like a work of art. All right, so now that we're back in the water, we are celebrating by going on a hike. Really pretty are we day. celebrating? Yeah. yeah. And Viola is here. This is Tommy's fiance. So we're going to the Turga Trace sign and yeah, going up the mountain. Bud, you see all these flowers? Yeah, pretty. Huh? They're so pretty. There's tons of them. Wow. 
That's pretty. Give it to the baby. I think it's toxic to babies. <laughs> Don't eat it. He's like, thank you. You got your flower? I will wait until you're not looking. <laughs> And then I will cause a medical situation <laughs> while you're on the top of the, the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I got you one. There you go. So, Tommy, you've been enjoying hanging out with Isabella? Oh, every day, all day. Yeah. That's the reason I, I didn't come to see you guys, really. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just baby. Baby, 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 baby. <laughs> okay, so there's the trigger trace sign. Okay, baby, we did it. We're back in the water. Do you feel good? Is that the stinker, baby? <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. Did, did dad do a good job? <laughs> we'll find out. 